Solar panels are everywhere in the UK, but is there an alternative? Are we missing a trick here? Hello, if you are a subscriber, welcome back. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Neil, and I am a real life architect in the UK. I discuss the legal, technical, regulatory, and financial aspects of altering and extending private homes in the UK. Now, one of the most popular videos on my channel compares the return on investment between air source heat pumps and battery storage systems. The battery wins by a mile, but a lot of comments on that video asked, why didn't I include solar panels in the calculation? The main reason is that everyone's house is different. Some people have larger roofs, and others don't face the right direction to get the sunlight. My own roof faces east-west, and I live in the shadow of a large hill, so from December to January we don't get any direct sunlight. You get the idea. But looking at the limitations of solar panels made me think about wind turbines. You see, on paper, these two renewable technologies should complement each other, especially if your house has a battery storage system. It is usually windier on days when there's lots of rain and cloud, and PVs are less effective. And of course, the wind blows at night when solar panels are useless. It would appear that having a wind turbine on my home alongside some solar panels, all feeding into a battery system, would be the optimal setup. So why don't we see wind turbines on houses in the UK? Part of the answer is that battery storage systems are still rare, but as these increase in popularity, there is still a major issue with small-scale micro-wind turbines. Let's start with the basics. There are micro-wind turbine systems on the market in the UK, but they are marketed towards homes which are off-grid. That means the house is in a remote location and probably has enough land around it to place a sizable turbine. This kind of system won't work nearly as well for the majority of UK houses, which are in built-up areas. You see, the problem with wind turbines is that they need the airflow to be clean. That is, have as little turbulence as possible. If your home is surrounded by other buildings, all of varying height and maybe some mature trees, these will disrupt the airflow and your wind turbine won't work efficiently. It never really gets a chance to get going before the wind drops or changes direction. Turbulence is something that several wind turbine manufacturers have been working on. The most common design for use on homes in built-up areas is the vertical axis turbine. These look very different to the more familiar horizontal axis turbine we are used to seeing. The big advantage of a vertical axis turbine is that it can rotate and generate electricity no matter what direction the wind is blowing, and crucially, it will continue operating in turbulent air. Vertical axis wind turbines are not perfect, however. The design has some serious drawbacks. They are less efficient than conventional wind turbines, which is why you won't see them on a large scale. Conventional horizontal axis wind turbines are usually 40 to 50% efficient, while vertical axis turbines are only 10 to 17% efficient. Because they operate in turbulent environments, vertical axis turbines are subject to more wear and tear, and they need more regular maintenance. They are known to vibrate, and because they can't avoid the wind, Rotating no matter what direction it blows, they act like a sail, putting pressure on the structure supporting them. I'll come back to that point later. Some vertical axis wind turbines struggle to get started when the wind picks up, and several need a starter motor, something conventional horizontal axis turbines don't need. To get an idea of what the current state of the art looks like, and costs, I checked out Tessup, a company headquartered in the UK which makes two models of small vertical axis wind turbines. Their cheapest model, the Atlas X, is just over 1 meter tall and can generate 4 kilowatts at a wind speed of 15 meters per second. It needs at least 3 meters per second to get the turbine spinning. Tessup sells these for just over a thousand pounds each. They also stock the inverters and cables required to make it all work. Interestingly, they also sell solar panels, so they get the idea that wind can only be part of the answer. The big problem with fitting a wind turbine on your house is that the house won't have been designed to take the force. The force? Let me explain what I'm talking about. You must learn the ways of the force. From a construction point of view, the strongest part of a masonry wall is the corner, where the bricks or blocks interlink. But if your house has a conventional pitched roof, the corner will be at the lowest point of that roof, which is the worst place to locate a turbine. The turbine will operate best if it's secure to the highest point of the building. For most houses in the UK, that will be the roof ridge or chimney. Let's leave aside any questions about planning permission just now, focus on the structural and practical issues. Walls, whatever they are built from, are subject to what engineers call a slenderness ratio. 
the taller the wall or chimney, the thicker they need to be to resist force. That wind turbine, fixed to the highest point on the gable wall or chimney, is in the worst possible position, exerting maximum force on the weakest part of the structure. A wind turbine will act like a sail. It will convert the force of the wind into rotational energy or torque, which is what is needed to turn the generator and make electricity. The downside is that in order to resist the force of the wind, the turbine exerts a sideways force on whichever part of the house it's fixed to. The highest point on the gable wall or the top of a chimney are usually designed to deal with force being exerted from above. They are not especially good at dealing with lateral force being pushed from the side. We also need to take account of the vibrations caused by the turbines. Most UK houses have brick or block construction and vibrations will weaken the mortar joints in these over time. So that shiny new turbine may look okay for the first couple of years, but it could eventually bring the house down. To safely fit this kind of technology to your home, you should consult with a structural engineer first. They can check the maximum lateral force that can be safely imposed by a turbine. If even the smallest turbine poses too high a risk, the engineer could then suggest strengthening the existing wall or chimney, probably by fitting steel posts to the structure. You can see this growing arms and legs, and the cost rapidly increasing to the point where it just isn't feasible. There is also the problem of aesthetics. Regular wind turbines look very obvious, and won't be acceptable to neighbours and planning departments in some places. So, is there an alternative? Well, it turns out a Canadian company called The Power Collective is working on something that might address both the structural and the aesthetic issues. This is the ridge blade, and it is basically a vertical axis wind turbine laid on its side and covered with a cowl to direct the wind into the blades. This relies on the Aeolian wind focus effect and takes advantage of conventional pitch roof designs common in the UK. This focuses the wind and concentrates its effect on the turbine blades. The product is sold in 1.2 meter long modules and five of them can produce 2 kilowatts of electricity at wind speed of 11 meters per second. They claim that over a year this system will produce 5,000 kilowatt hours of electricity at an average wind speed of 6 meters per second. You can see from this graph on their website that the Power Collective intend the ridge blade to work with solar panels and that the two systems complement each other. The Power Collective claimed the ridge blade is very quiet, vibration free and its rotation is self-regulating so it will not run too fast in high wind. While the ridge blade is larger than typical turbines, I think it's less visually intrusive than more usual turbine designs and more likely to fit in with houses in the UK. More importantly, the design can spread the load over a large area of roof. This will greatly reduce the stress on an existing structure and get around the problem vertical access turbines cause when strapped to a wall or a chimney. The Power Collective have posted on their Facebook page looking to partner with suppliers in the UK, but so far I have been unable to find a retailer in this country, so I can't quote prices. I did find a forum post from 2020 mentioning prices for the ridge blade in euros, and if that were converted to pounds, the system would cost several times that of the Tessup wind turbine I mentioned earlier. Despite this, it's worth keeping an eye on the ridge blade. It seems to directly address the structural and the aesthetic concerns commonly found with small-scale home wind turbines in built-up areas. I put a link in the description. I should point out, this isn't a paid promotion. Neither Tessup or the Power Collective are aware I included their products in this video. I found them while researching the topic and wanted to show where the current state of the art is. I suspect we are some way off from being able to combine solar PV panels and micro wind generation. If we could find a practical and affordable way of generating meaningful amounts of electricity from wind on a typical UK house and store that electricity in a home battery unit, it would go a very long way towards addressing our current energy needs. If you know of any clever micro wind turbine designs that solve both these structural and aesthetic issues while generating electricity in built up areas, let me know about it in the comments. And if you are thinking about altering, extending or refurbishing a home in the UK, I provide online consultations via the Real Life Architect website. See this link for more details. Thank you for watching.